So I had to go to Costco earlier this week and they already had Christmas stuff up. And my first thought was the fires from the dang fireworks haven't even been put out yet. Can we at least get Halloween? My second more snarky thought was three weeks of Pride merchandise in June and these freaks absolutely lose their ever-loving minds, but six months worth of Christmas, totally fine. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome, everyone, to episode 24 of, I think, <laughs> of Gary Knits, Gary Rides, a craftivism podcast at the intersection of making things and doing good. My name is Gary. I am a knitter and a crocheter. I am also a cyclist with AIDS Life Cycle, a seven-day, 545-mile bike ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles, that is a fundraiser for the life-saving work of the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and the Los Angeles LGBT Center. As part of my fundraising for the past several years, I have run a series of knit-alongs and crochet-alongs called the End AIDS Knit-Alongs and Crochet-Alongs. I also run an occasional fiber auction on Instagram called D-Stash for Good. You can find me on Instagram as Gary Knits, Gary Rides and on Ravelry at Gary Knits and Rides, where we also have a knit along and crochet along group. I hope you are doing well. Summer has finally arrived here in Southern California. We have had a really cool gray June, but we've hit pretty close to 90 the last couple of days, and I think we're headed into a heat wave um, this weekend. Luckily, there's still a nice breeze, so it's not terribly uncomfortable, but uh, definitely starts to starting to feel like summer, which is all <laughs> more weird to see Christmas decorations when I walked into Costco this week. Anyway, um, and it just means that time is moving by very, very quickly, uh, which it is. I've got so much going on um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, I got to do something really, really fun. Um, Knit Stars Yarniverse, which is their social media um, club, uh, has an, uh, has lives every couple of weeks, I think, um, and they bring people on that they call someone has nominated as a rising star. They asked me to join um, a couple of weeks ago, and so I got to spend an hour hanging out with the members of the Yarniverse. Um, got to chat with Lewis of Brooklyn Boy Knits, who's one of the hosts of the event, uh, Gigi from Gigi Made It, um, as well as uh, Sunny Noodley Knits. So they were all there as part of the um, start part of the program. We talked about all the things that uh, that I do over here in terms of craftivism and raising money for AIDS life cycle. Um, and then we played some games and did some giveaways. So it was just a really, really fun uh, event. I know a couple of folks from the Yarniverse uh, came over and uh, subscribed to the, the channel. So I appreciate that. Hope you enjoy um, the show. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I really would appreciate it if you would. We are very close to crossing over 800. I would love to get close to 1,000 by my potiversary, which is coming up sometime in August, I think. Um, so that would be great. Otherwise, thumbs up uh, and leave some comments down below. Um, also got to hang out with my mom and dad for an afternoon, which is fun. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that in a minute. Um, and then um, have really started to get things rolling for the upcoming season three kickoff for the knit-alongs and crochet-alongs. I can't believe um, this little break from <laughs> from the ride uh, until we kick off things um, for the knit-alongs and crochet-alongs uh, seems very, very brief. I try to, to build in some, some downtime, but uh, because we want to kick off the, knit the fall knit-alongs and crochet-alongs uh, September 1st. That means we need to start announcing dyers and designers here in the next few weeks so that the dyers in particular can start to roll out their pre-orders and get the yarn ordered and to everyone who's going to be participating by the cast on date uh, September 1st. So stay tuned for those announcements coming up 
In fact, I think the first announcement is going to come out before my next episode. So July 25th, tentatively, is going to be the very first announcement for the season three kickoff for the end aids, knit alongs and crochet alongs. It is going to be the biggest one of these I have done by far. I think there's something like six or seven patterns, um, a bunch of designers, a bunch of dyers, people I'm really, really excited uh, about working on. I think I've mentioned it before, but I will mention it again, a little hint. Um, the season three kickoff, the fall knit alongs and crochet alongs are all about accessories. And we're going to not only be raising money for AIDS life cycle, but it's also going to be an accessories drive for Knit the Rainbow. All the details on that are going to be coming up. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be giveaways in the knit along and the crochet along side. There's going to be giveaways in the uh, accessories drive side of things. So it should be a really fun few months of just knitting accessories uh, and then putting together some donations for, for Knit the Rainbow. So stay tuned for that. First one, July 25th. Um, if you are a D-Stash for Good person, either a shopper or more importantly, a seller on D-Stash for Good, um, start gathering your D-Stash items. We are going to be having the first D-Stash uh, of this new season uh, coming up in, in August. I will probably have the listings or the request for listings form go uh, live sometime in the either the very late part of July or the early part of August um, so that we can run the auction and have it end just as fundraising opens for the 2024 AIDS life cycle. So I just need to check with the AIDS life cycle folks to find out what date that is going to happen. It usually happens mid-August, so that's what I've been planning on. Um, but watch the D-Stash for Good. Um, I'll put it up here again. Uh, the D-Stash for Good account over on Instagram for um, notifications of when that is going to, when both the listings um, request is going to go and then when the auction is going to, to happen. So I'm hoping to have a big one to kick off the fundraising for the 2024 ride so I can hit the ground running and get close to or maybe surpass my long-term goal of raising $200,000 for the, the, the charities. Um, I talked about giveaways for the upcoming knit along and crochet along. I had a giveaway right here on uh, the YouTube channel uh, from the last episode. If you remember, I had a skein of pretty twisted yarns, I would tie dye for you, which was her June fundraising color. Uh, it was being uh, sold to fundraise for the Trevor Project, and we have a winner. It was Lila Styles, whose <laughs> yarn cozy I have on so my yarn right now. Um, so I will reach out to um, Lila because I know her, but I should say um, there's been an increasing number of scams, scammers here on YouTube uh, regarding giveaways. So going forward, um, what I will do whenever I do a giveaway here on uh, on YouTube is what a lot of folks do is I will just announce it here and then it is up to you to reach out to me at GaryNitsGaryRides at gmail.com which is my email address um, and you should not um, respond to anyone who uh, to reaches, reaches out to you um, uh, regarding winning if, if your name hasn't been uh, announced here. So um, Lila Styles, I will um, I will reach out to because I know who you are. Um, but uh, going forward, I'm just going to make the announcements here and then you will need to reach out to, to me at GaryNitsGaryRides at gmail.com or you can DM, DM me on, um, on Instagram. Um, but congratulations, Angelica. Uh, I'm really excited that you, uh, that you won that yarn. I hope you make something beautiful with it. Um, I guess while we're on giveaways and prizes and things like that, um, we are in the final stretch of the Pride Knit Along and Crochet Along from last year. <laughs> and I say last year, it was like last month. But um, so we've got about two weeks left, I guess, and that'll run to the end of July. And we have three more rounds of prizes. I think I said last time I would show you what they are because they are really, really amazing uh, prizes. Four, uh, we have... Um, a final round of whips uh, prizes for both the crochet along and the knit along. Then we have the FO prizes for the knit along and crochet along. And then we have the grand prize winner that cr crosses over both the knit along and the crochet along. So for the final whips prizes, uh, the winner is going to get to grab a skein out of my booty stash of uh, giveaway yarns. Um, I didn't bring that here because it's pretty big and um, 
I usually just photograph them and send people or maybe sort it out by um, by weight and then let people choose. And they will get their choice of bag from the bag pile. I have bags from Scrappy Angel. I have bags from Beautiful Sister. I have bags from Mrs. Brown's bags and Ginger Snap that. So there are lots of items to, to choose from. So you get your choice of a bag, your choice of a skein of yarn from the booty stash. Um, for the final whips, um, winners. The crochet winner is going to get, oof, sorry. Uh, I always do this. I can't set up, I can't f quite figure out a setup where I can reach and grab everything um, easily. Uh, a set of five furls crochet hooks. This is in, this is one of the resin hooks in this gorgeous orange. Um, so I have a set of those furls. Um, not sure exactly that was a big one, but I, I think they are a pretty wide range of, uh, of sizes. On the knitting side, the winner will receive um, this. Oh, nope, not that one. It's a grand prize. Um, we'll receive this set of yarn from Rainbow Peaks Yarn. It has um, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, uh, seven colorways, I think. Um, they are, it was one full skein um, of this dark blue and then six half skeins uh, of a DK weight um, 8515. Uh, so this is from the folks at Rainbow Peak Yarns. And then for the grand prize winner for the Pride Knit Along and Crochet Along, um, a truly epic bundle of yarn. <laughs> I don't even know how many, four, nine i think nine full skeins uh this is from samantha at whimsical wood who was the dyer and designer for the the knit along project that we're working on um and this is her glitter baby sock base so it's 400 yards of 95 um superwash merino and <laughs> five percent of what she calls unicorn farts which is stelina um and then just in all of the rainbow uh the rainbow colors so that is going to be the uh, the grand prize for the, the pride. Then one final drawing that we will do is going to take all of the participants from every knit along and crochet along that we did um, uh, this year. Anyone who submitted an FO photo for any of the projects gets their name in the hat for one final season grand prize winner. And that is this absolutely gorgeous fade set of Treehouse Knits yarns. Uh, that was donated by Knitters Without Borders LLC. So you will get the full fade set of this stunning uh, Treehouse uh, Treehouse Knits um, yarn. And this is on her uh, spruce sock base, which is 75 uh, 25. So that is the season grand prize finale. And then we will have hopefully cleared out most of the prizes um, and we'll start fresh for uh, for next year with the, uh, the next round of uh, knit alongs and crochet alongs. It's getting a little warm in here. Um, so that is where we all are on the knit along and crochet along. I'll show you where I am on my projects um, when we get into the, the whips and the, the FOs. But we're going to wrap things up here in the next couple of weeks and start right back up with at least announcements. We have a, another month of rest before we actually start casting on. But from my end, uh, things really ramp up uh, the first uh, first few weeks of August as we get all these things announced and get the pre-orders going for the for the new yarn kits. In terms of actual knitting and crocheting, I have a couple of FOs. Uh, one I'm super excited about. I don't actually have it here, but it is the Wendy Day blanket from Pearl Soho that has been sent off to the high school graduate for which it was a gift. Um, here's a picture of the, the finished product. I am really happy about the way that it turned out. It was a really fun project. I think, you know, with most blankets, by the end, you're really ready for them uh, for them to be done. And this one wasn't even that gigantic, but I really loved the process, this modular uh, join as you go knitting. Um, it did have a lot of ends to weave in at the, at the end of the day, but uh, it went pretty um, pretty quickly. It was all done in, in Malabrigo Rios, um, as I've said before. But again, I, I had a really fun time with this project and it's probably one that I would I would consider making uh, again if uh, if someone you know asked for one for a graduation present. So I hope she enjoys it um, and I hope it gets a lot of uh, a love over the, the years. 
The other... Sorry, the other FO that I finished was a pair of socks. It got really, really warm in here. I said <laughs> summer has arrived. Uh, we haven't quite set the uh, the AC up, so I had to, to turn that up. Hopefully it's not too uh, too noisy. Um, were a pair of this pair of socks that I have been working on for quite a while as part of my 2023 goal of becoming a sock knitter. And my, my goal in terms of the number of pairs to... To, to knit were only only three, and this is pair number two, so I'm definitely um, on track uh, for that. But more importantly, my goal was to figure out my sock recipe in terms of the number of stitches and the needle size and all that, and then to try to get a handle on what my preferred method of making a basic uh, sock for myself uh, was. I have lots of really cool self-striping sock yarn. Um, I have even more regular <laughs> regular sock yarn uh, that I would really like to, to use, but I just have never sat down and figured out, you know, what the perfect sock method is for me and the perfect sock, you know, recipe is, is for me. So I've been trying several, I've been trying several different, uh, different methods. I did a pair of Magic Loop socks, um, which turned out pretty well. Uh, but I didn't love the 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 gauge on them. The, the fabric on them was a little too, or it was just too loose. I think I had too too many stitches. I think those were seventy two. Um, so this time I did sixty four stitches. And I should probably step back. So what I used for these was the knit two socks in one book uh, from Sophia Tally, the Drunk Knitter dot com. Um, who is, I think, just Drunk Knitter on Instagram. I keep messing that up. Um, apologies. So uh, I got this book and wanted to try out this method, which is essentially knitting one giant sock, uh, and then you mark it in different places for uh, heels and toes and splitting, and you split them, and then you know you add those component pieces to that, uh, to that giant tube. So I, as I said, this was a 64, um, 64 cast on, in terms of the number of stitches, it was on a US one. I'm very, very happy with this fabric. I've, I've tried these on and um, I think that they are tight enough. I think one thing I would do differently, and I have so much, I have like 40 grams extra of yarn, so I could have definitely done this, is I would make the legs longer. These are about probably a cuff length, again, um, too short for where I would like to wear them. They're staying up, but I would just like a little more, uh, a little more length on the heel. But otherwise, um, I'm really loving the um, uh, the way the fabric turned out. This yarn is from Yarnaceous Fiber. It is uh, Maggie's Salta Fingering, which I can tell you if I can get it. Oh, yeah. Is uh, 8515. Uh, uh, the colorway is Spinosaurus Rex, and then the contrasting heels and toes are in her uh, same same. Uh, it was a sock set. Uh, the colorway is fog. It's kind of a. It looks like it almost matches the gray, but it's a it's a really pale lavender uh, purple. Um, so, drunk knitter has you knit the long tube, and um, I followed the the pattern exactly as, as written it's <laughs> i get i get teased a bit on our, our uh, weekly zoom calls for the for knit along crochet along about my um at least the first time i'm through a pattern that i have to follow it sort of to the letter um and then you know the second time it's kind of like a recipe i do the exact same thing with recipes uh the second time through then i could uh could t tweak it so i did it exactly as she had written so she does not have you um graft the toes at the end, the toes and the heels at the end. Um, they are just, you go down to eight stitches and then cinch them. Um, I don't love, I mean, I have not soaked and, and blocked these, so I'm assuming that that will work itself out um, a little bit, the little nipple at the end. Um, but it also creates a little bump at the very bottom of your heel, which I, uh, which I didn't love. So I would probably, if I do this again, I would probably use a different, um, a different heel method. Um, I, she has you do the toes and the heels exactly the same. Um, again, I think I might try to do it with a different uh, heel. I didn't mind the, the toe, I would probably just uh, Kitchener it a, a little sooner. Um, but otherwise, 
I definitely see the the pluses to this method uh, of doing stocks, especially if you're traveling with them. So at least for me, I can't see myself traveling with a pair of socks and stopping to do a heel if like I'm on a plane or in a car with all the sort of machinations that that involves. Maybe several years hence when I'm a much more confident sock knitter, that would be fine. But right now, I would just have to stop and move on to something else. And this allows you just to go round and round and round and round for the most part, marking things in certain spots. Um, and so I think for from a travel for a travel project, I think it would be a great uh, a great method of of doing it. Um, don't want to give too much away about the you know in terms of the uh, the method, although I'm it's it's not it's not rocket science, but it uh, you know she does lay out it step by step. Um, the only thing other thing I you know it's hard to see it here, but because you add one cuff, you start you cast on with one cuff and then you add one cuff later. Um, and so then your edge is a bind off edge instead of a cast on edge. And it looks pretty close here when they're off the blockers. Um, I can tell a different, the one that's the, the bind off edge is a little flared. Again, that may work itself out in, in blocking. I don't, I don't know. Um, but, uh, I, I just put them on the blockers because I wanted to, <laughs> to have an FO to show, uh, because the other one was in the mail already. So, um, these are my two socks in one. Um, I'm happy with the way they turned out. I know now I need to make longer legs, but I think 64, at least for the time being, on a US-1 is a fabric that I like, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm not going to cast on another pair of socks immediately because I have another project that uh, is going to be kind of my mindless, just sitting in front of the TV, um, traveling in the car to concerts and things like that project. Um, but once that is done, and that was gonna, that should move pretty quickly because it's bulky weight yarn on big needles. Um, I will be casting on another pair of socks. You can let me know in the comments what you think my next approach should be. I'm kind of leaning towards two circulars now, and I don't know. Can you do two at a time on two circulars? I kind of want to try a two at a time method. Um, but I don't know if you can do that on two two circulars, or if you have to do those um, one at a time. The other thing that I'm leaning toward is, um, so the first pair of socks that I did uh, this year were a heel flap and gusset, and these are a you know forethought, afterthought heel, and so my thought is that the next one I should do is to try some sort of short roll heel. Everyone seems to really like the fish lips kiss, heel and so I thought I might give that uh, give that a try and it's okay I guess if I have to do one at a time um, with that methodology um, I can try two at a time as sort of my next uh, next round but if you have a thoughts um, still haven't done toe up so that's another option uh, as well so um, probably later this fall we'll get started on a, another pair of uh, another pair of socks in terms of that is it oh no, I do have an FO, another FO. <laughs> I talked about this last time, I think, as, as a on the needles or coming coming soon to the needles. I mentioned I had gone to visit um, my mom and dad, and they only live, you know, 45 minutes an hour away from here, so it wasn't like real traveling. But the reason I went over there is my mom is an expert quilter, and I was not making a quilt, but I did want to dust off my sewing machine, which had not seen the light of day since probably three months after we bought it 10 years ago and wanted to make some placemats for the little tables at the Hollywood Bowl. So our Hollywood Bowl um, concert season is kicking off next weekend, I think, is reggae night. We get we have six shows that are part um, put together by our local NPR station uh, called KCRW. It's They call it their World Music Festival. So it's all genres. It's always a mix of um, some people I've heard of, some people I've never heard of, but it's sitting outside, you know, in lovely Southern California summer weather and, you know, having a picnic and listening to, to great music. So um, it doesn't really matter to me most of the time who the, who the, um, who the bands are, but the first one, or one, one of them is always reggae night. And that's the first one, uh, first one this year, but they ha you have these little tables at your seats that pop up 
um, kind of like a airplane tray, but they're not in front of you. They're off, you know, you sit on either side of them. Um, and I didn't have placemats for, for them. They, a standard size placemat is too small. And so I've always said that I was going to break out the, the sewing machine and make some, uh, some placemats for the Hollywood ball tables. I've never done it, I've never done it. I said, this year is the year I'm gonna finally do it. So I went down to Joanne, got some fabric, and found a tutorial on uh, YouTube. I'm gonna forget the person's name, but I'll put it right down here below. Um, and it was a how to sew 101 kind of series of, of lessons. And the first actual sewing lesson was double-sided placemats, which is exactly what I wanted. So went over to my mom's house and just wanted her to kind of look over my shoulder and we made placemats. Now, I am not going to win any Happy Homemaker straight seams contests, but um, I don't know if you can see them, but not terrible. I, I, I gave myself a, you know, a generous uh, B minus C plus on uh, on the on the sewing. My cutting <laughs> and keeping things square skills that could use a little uh, little work. But there were no fingers punctured, no cutting errors. We were able to to get the two placemats out of the the amount of yarn uh, amount of fabric that I bought. So one side is the uh, green polka dots. The other side is pink with swirls. I was going to bring a plate in here. The plates that we have are these like multicolor um, plates. Some of them are lines, some of them are swirls. Um, so I just thought it would be really fun in summary and totally watermelon vibes there. So that was another FO. I'm really happy with how they turned out. We got to go to a rehearsal at the Hollywood Bowl two nights ago, I think. Um, and we got there late, so I didn't get to set up one of the tables because the orchestra was already rehearsing. It was one of the classical music shows. And so I didn't want to create a commotion by trying to put up the little table to see if they would fit. Um, and I didn't take them with me anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. But I kind of eyeballed it, and I think, I think it's going to be fine. Um, so if it all works out well and they fit and I don't have to remake them uh, bigger or smaller, I think the next sewing project are going to be... I think the next one in the series is... Um, cloth napkins with mitered corners. So that's going to be, stay tuned for <laughs> the next adventure in uh, in, in sewing. Um, I think I can do it on my own this time. I don't, probably don't need to, to go over to mom's uh, to, to have her help me out. But that was uh, that was the last of the, uh, the, the FOs. In terms of the whips, the two big ones that I'm focused on are the Knit Along and the Crochet Along project. I hate to break it to you, but I don't think I'm going to finish them both by the end of uh, the knit along crochet along. That's fine. As I always say with the knit alongs and crochet alongs, we reward participation much more than completion. So I feel okay about that. But I thought on the crochet project, I was very confident last week. Um, I thought I was getting close to the end. I posted a post on Instagram. I'm making this for my, uh, for my sister. I'll get it here in just a second. But I posted, I was like, oh, you know, by the end of the weekend, I'm going to have this and, you know, we'll have to decide if we want to hold it here until you come out to visit or if I'm going to drop it in the mail. Well, a couple things. Had house guests over the weekend and I always forget that when we're having guests, <laughs> very little knitting or crocheting gets done because uh, I go into host mode and I'm cooking and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, and then um, understanding how this ends would have required me to read ahead in the pattern and realize that just because I seem to be getting to the end of the main part of the, the garment that there may still be some, <laughs> some finishing work to be done on it. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to show of this, but here's the basic fabric. This is the um, In the Forest of the Night cardigan by Elizabeth Desimore, Desimore Designs. Um, it is was essentially a big rectangle and then you'll see there's flaps on either side um, that are crocheted separately and then a flap in the middle. Now one thing I sort of failed to gauge was how much wider that flap in the middle is. When I looked at the schematic, they all look about the same and I, for some reason I just thought it was gonna be another narrow flap because I haven't quite, um, haven't quite figured out the origami of it all in terms of how it uh, folds up uh, together. I've laid it out a couple times and I think I've gotten it and then the minute I pick it back up and try to wrap my head around it, I lose 
what I thought I uh, what I thought I knew. It is definitely a shortcoming of mine that whatever that that skill is, where you can sort of visualize something in space, um, impossible for me to uh, impossible to do. So I'm going to just have. To, I only have about six more rows on this middle flap, uh, and then the magic happens with the origami, and that's what I thought was the end. But had I flipped through toward the very end of the um, the pattern, I would have seen that then there is a border that basically goes around the whole thing. I think it's like a single crochet, then back with half double crochets, and it maybe ends with a double crochet. So, um, and it is not insignificant <laughs> in terms of uh, surface area. So the um, perimeter of it is pretty big. So that's gonna be, to get around that with single crochets is gonna take a little time. So. I'm hoping that this is the one that I get finished. Of, of the two projects, this is the one that I'm going to try to, to focus my, my time on um, just because um, I would like to get it to my sister so that maybe she can wear it um, before things start to cool down in the fall because she is getting the sleeveless version of this. So it's really just going to be kind of a summer summer cover-up kind of thing over a, over a t-shirt or whatever. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed this project. I've said that before. It goes very quickly. Um, once you get the the pattern down um, I will say uh, I found and I confirmed with uh, in the notes on Ravelry sorry about that the dogs went ballistic when the Amazon person showed up to make a delivery anyway as I was saying the uh, I did find um, in a couple spots and it's the same row on each of the back panels that there are errors in the um, in the written uh, the written pattern so if you are working on it um, just just know that when you get there, um, it's really easy to figure out because you've set up you've set up the pattern and it's basically the same uh, same across. So you will definitely catch where the uh, where the problem is. And if you just keep going in the established pattern, that's all you need to do. So hopefully, as I said, um, with any luck, this weekend I'll at least be finished with the main body crocheting and I can do the origami magic and then um, start working on the border, which. Uh, will be a lot easier because there's no counting or keeping track of a pattern. I'm just going round and round and round. So that is something I could do while uh, while watching TV. I couldn't. This is not, at least for me, this is not TV uh, TV work. It uh, takes a little bit too much concentration um, for me. Um, so that is the first of the um, the knit along the crochet oblong patterns from Pride. The second is the knitting pattern, and it is living in my Hohi Locatelli. Lola Bean collab camo bucket bag, and that is the pin up rainbows shawl. Um, I've done some work on it. It's um, I haven't been able to spend a ton of time on that this this week. Again, um, this requires a little more con concentration, and I haven't quite gotten there in terms of uh, doing this while while sitting around and doing um, uh, other stuff. Just because the making of the rainbows and the pinning them up um, takes a little more concentration, and you're you're always sort of trying to keep track of which row you are above above the where you've made the rainbow. So in this case, where you've made the rainbow before you, you pin it up. So just a little more um, concentration required. But you can see I had my little Le Garçon progress keeper there. So I've added, I don't know, what is that? Like four or five inches maybe? Um, uh, more progress on that. And this will now be my primary knitting project uh, uh, going forward. Um, I'm having a ton of fun with this. It's we were talking yesterday on the um, on the Zoom call. Some people were like, I just haven't gotten the hang of uh, the rainbows, and you know, she, some of them look great, some of them don't look great, and I'm just sort of like, you know, I'm kind of letting go that I have some that are kind of sad, and then some look okay. I would say I'm like uniformly mediocre in my rainbow making um but it's so outside of my like zone in terms of like colors and, and things that i would normally make for myself that i've just kind of let go of like any of my perfectionism and just kind of like having fun with it um it's really potato chippy as uh jasmine or as um Gigi on the knit more girl says because it's like you're always looking ahead to make that next rainbow or pin up that next rainbow um and see where the the color changes are going to happen but um I'm probably about, I don't even know if I'm halfway through a skein, um, and just based on what I've seen other people doing, I'm guessing about a skein and a half will get me to a size uh, where I'll be happy to uh, to bind off and um, have a nice wearable size of a, of a shawl. 
Um, but this is the Pinup Rainbows by Whimsical Wood Yarn Co. Both the design and the yarn from uh, Samantha at Whimsical Wood. It's been uh, a lot of fun. She has her Barbie collection coming out. I think tomorrow, so yesterday, or yesterday, as you're as you're seeing this, um, and she's had a bunch of really fun colorways um, uh, coming out. I'm going to talk a, a little bit about something that you could use uh, another yarn for for one of you know one of her um, ass hat uh, designs. So, um, so that's the pinup rainbows um, shawl. The other shawl that I have been working on is um, the pop tart by Tammy Gore. This is TV and travel knitting for the time being, but I don't have a super tight timeline to get this done. It just needs to be done by the end of August. And I mean, based on the yarn, I'm probably down to 30 grams uh, left. So it's not gonna get much, uh, not too much more of this uh, to go. I think it's hard to see this one because this is one that really requires some aggressive blocking to, to get the pattern to, to emerge. Um, but I think I was down here in this first little lace panel um, last time I showed this. So I've made a lot of progress. I'm through the second of the little square lace panels and now doing the all over lace uh, section, which I think is about 10 rows of that. Um, and then I think it probably goes back to, to, to garter. This is, again, the Pop-Tart shawl by uh, Tammy Gore. I was doing it for, um, Black Knitters uh, Juneteenth Make Along, and I am using uh, a one of a kind um, skein of fingering weight yarn from uh, Carolyn Dick Designs. So, this is uh, again, this is going to be a gift for a friend of ours in Italy, and another friend from Italy is visiting us in August, and I'm going to send it back uh, to Florence with him to, to give to her. Um, but, very fun, kind of easy going, um, simple pattern. Um, and hopefully, based on the pictures, which I'll pop a picture of the final product up here, you can see how an aggressive, and it says in the pattern, like aggressively block, how that really stretches that out and sort of makes that lace um, much more visually interesting. So that is the Pop-Tart. And then the other thing that I've started, and I think I hinted at it last time, but we'll talk a little bit, we'll get more into it once I've swatched and see how that works, but I've started swatching for my Rhinebeck sweater, and it is going okay. Um, I'm kind of working on it intermittently, but here's where I need to swatch. But here is where I am. This is I'm using the needles it calls for, which I think are fives. Um, can't read that now, but I think it's a US 5, no, US 6. Um, and the yarn that I am using for uh, for the sweater, so I should say the, the pattern that I've decided to do for my Rhinebeck sweater is the Painted Honeycombs here's a picture uh, by Stephen West. I am using as the main color um, this Shibui, which is Haven. Um, it is a 80... 8020 extra fine merino cashmere and the colorway is I think it's called suit yeah suit um, and so that's gonna be the, the main color and then rather than do the honeycombs in a bunch of different colors I'm just gonna use one single variegated um, colorway this is rum punch by fully spun both of these are DK weight um, and so that is the pairing there we go so rum punch from Fully Spun and Suit in uh, Shibui Haven. Uh, I'm liking the fabric that this is giving me. I mean, obviously it hasn't been blocked, so we'll see what happens when uh, when it gets, uh, gets washed. Um, the interesting thing here is I was talking about swatching um, on our weekly Zoom call, and if you would like to join, please join us on Tuesday evenings, uh, 7 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. West Coast time. Um, even if you're not participating in the knit alongs and crochet alongs, we would love to, to have you uh, join. Um, all the information is down below in the show notes. Here's a QR code that if you're watching this on your TV, you can scan and get a copy of those um, show notes. So we're talking about swatching and swatching in the round. And I was like, do you really need to swatch in the round? 
and Valerie, who is the host of the the weekly Zooms from um, she's Creations by Valerie on Instagram. She's a visit with Nana and Papa here on um, on YouTube, and she's like, yeah, you really should. Um, but have you seen Patty Lyons' trick for swatching in the round? Um, because I'm used to swatching in the round and having these sort of long trailing things even more traumatic than this on both sides and you have to cut them to flatten it out to um, to block it and I said no I hadn't and so she sort of pointed me in in the direction I found it um, on Patty's knit stars module which I have um, it's not in her book so I have her knitting bag of tricks so it's I think it's something that she um, discovered or figured out um, after she after she wrote the book and she may have it up on on YouTube um, and I can't imagine that I'm spoiling anything that's proprietary to the, the Knit Stars module but rather than I'll see if I can describe it rather than knit across um, and then draw out a big thing and then knit back and then draw out a big thing and knit back um, you basically get to the get to the end draw out a big loop I actually have one here that's for me about four times the width of the or length of the the row you draw that out slide things across like you would normally do to, to swatch in the round um, and then rather than knit from the loop you knit from your working yarn the first time get to the end of that then slide it back and the second time you do that pass you knit from from the loop so then when you end with, with that um, you're back with no loop left because you've you've measured out enough so it just leaves in most cases you can see I was experimenting here with different links but in most cases you just get a little tab in some cases very little because I hadn't quite figured out the how much to, to pull out for the loop um, but you don't end up with the big long loops on uh, on this side that you have to clip which I think is important because especially if you're knitting something like Shibui which went out of business and you only have X amount uh, of yarn I mean I think I bought yarn insurance enough to to cover the sweater um, but I'm always nervous about those things um, if it got down to yarn chicken because you haven't had to cut all these things um, to make the little fringy thing that you normally get um, you could actually use this uh, after you've blocked it to um, as a, a little extra insurance insurance policy so that was kind of mind-blowing for me when um, I discovered it if I you know I will try to look and see if I can find a YouTube uh, video where she um, where she explains it far better than, <laughs> than I just did um, but it was you know it was one of those things that you're like oh, aha moment um a different way to uh to do things that you thought you knew how to do um so i'm enjoying the, this fabric it could be a little tighter i think for me but we'll just have to see if i get gauge first time i'm making a sweater for myself first time i've i'm ever making a pullover sweater at all and so i'm a little um you know, nervous about that not nervous that i won't be able to figure out how to do it um because i'm pretty confident that i'll be able to you know do that um, what I'm more nervous about is that I'll finish it and I don't like the way it um, it fits as particularly around the neck like I feel like I can figure out adjustments to make um, in the body but for the most part when I see men's um, pendant sweater patterns just like I hate the way the necks um, look they just look too boat necky um, for me and I don't really want a turtleneck per se but I just want um, you know a nice tight crew um slightly high crew um so we'll see uh i'm gonna play around with you know maybe doing some sort of provisional cast on um and just start from the the yoke and then come back and do the 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 neck separately so that then i can rip it out if i don't like it and and, and try it again so uh hoping to get this swatch uh, wrapped up here in the next uh, couple weeks get it blocked see where we are with gauge and then uh cast on cast on the sweater so i can get cranking on that and have it ready to go for for Rhinebeck this year.
Uh, speaking of Rhinebeck, we Cake Palooza tickets went on sale last week, and we got ours. So now we have tickets for all three of the Friday events. Um, I don't know how we're going to have enough energy after Wool and Folk and Indie Untangled and Cake Palooza to to then dive headfirst into a Saturday at uh, at Rhinebeck. So we'll um, maybe just go to bed early. I don't know. It's it's going to be fun, but I can imagine it's also going to be. Um, uh, going to be exhausting. So that's it on the uh, on the knitting content. I don't think I have um, anything to talk about in terms of what's coming up on the needles. I mentioned that I have a, a project um, that I'm going to get started, but I think I will wait and um, just show that after I've uh, cast on here in the next uh, in the next week or so. I've talked about it before, but. Um, in terms of acquisitions, um, actually got a quite a bit of uh, stuff. Some of it is still carryover from uh, the Pride yarn shopping fundraising stuff that uh, that happened at the beginning of the month has started. The last bits of that have trickled in, um, but I did get some some other stuff uh, as well. The first thing I wanted to show, well, I could show you because it's where my um, where my swatch for my Rhinebeck sweater is living. I was very excited to finally get. Oop, sorry, a chip basket. So this is um, Chip of Chip and Aaron of Fiber Hustle. And these are bags that he prototyped, I don't know, a year or so ago. Um, and then has started making them for sale. It's this really um, nice, sturdy, quilted, um, quilted fabric. And it opens up, so it's gonna be like, sort of a yarn bowl basket and then has a snap with a really sharp little fiber hustle branded, I don't know if you can get that, um, button on it and uh, snaps there, but it's really pretty and um, just it's very substantial, which is, it's great. It's a great, just put on the side of the couch um, and you can have your book and your yarn and everything in there. So that's the, the chip basket from uh, fiber hustle. Um, also from Fiber Hustle, while I was shopping at Fiber Hustle, um, Aaron had a bunch of updates for his uh, yarn stop shop. He started dyeing yarn the last uh, little bit, and I've been having so much fun with the assigned pooling on the pinup rainbows that I have bought several different <laughs> assigned pooling um, yarns for, for different projects. Uh, I got three skeins of this. This is his um, 8020 uh, Superwash Merino Nylon base fingering um, the colorway is called Kevin's head and um, I haven't quite decided which pattern it's gonna be a shawl um, and maybe Darcy does its cuddle puddle um, or maybe one of um, Barker wool's um, uh, assigned pooling patterns I haven't quite figured out which one but this is really a perfect right up my alleyway sort of washed out denim blue kind of uh, base with the sunset uh, sunset yellow and orange um, for the uh, for the assigned pooling stitches, so that'll be fantastic. Uh, so that was uh, uh, fiber hustle. I said I had some of the pride stuff come in. This was so fun. Um, this is a shawl blank from Neighborhood Fiber Company. Um, this was part of their uh, Pride and Juneteenth fundraisers. Um, it's rustic fingering uh, shawl blank, 100% superwash merino. It's a thousand yards um, of fingering wet yarn that has. Um, you know, been knit up, knit up on a machine. I can't imagine it was done by hand, um, and uh, cranked out on a machine, and then dyed in the pride flag colorways. Um, I posted on Instagram. I haven't. I mean, I think it's a shawl for sure. I think it wants to be a crocheted shawl, um, but I have not decided on uh, what pattern. So, if you have any thoughts on what would be a really great uh, pattern, thousand thousand yards of uh, fingering weight yarn um, let me know it doesn't have to be crochet but I just kind of I don't have a lot of crochet um, uh, shawls fingering weight crochet hmm, that might take a while but um, uh, I guess if it's lacy enough it could be a, be a fast project so give me some ideas in the uh, in the comments down below what what you think would be fun for a pride themed uh, shawl out of this really sh uh, shawl blank I had never seen a shawl blank before I think it's a, such a great um, way to get you know get a really cool gradient um because i love the the sock lengths that i've seen before um also on the um uh pride fundraising side of things i got um my order from silly goose yarns this is her no big deal colorway 
um, which was inspired by um, a young person in her life who I think maybe came out as trans. Um, and I think her child or some other child was like, whatever, no big deal. And this is on her cashmere sock, 85 uh, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. I got two skeins of this. Not sure what it's going to be, but I really love the colorway. And this was a fundraiser for um, a local organization in Minnesota where she is located called Tigers with two or three R's, um, which was, and I'm going to mess up exactly what the acronym stood for, um, but it was a, a local organization um, that works in the uh, trans youth community, I believe. So um, really, really pretty, really, really soft, um, beautiful colorway from uh, Silly Goose Yarns. Um, I ordered, not really a pride fundraiser, but um, Ava, my buddy Ava at Seismic Yarn. Um, this is a colorway we've seen before. This is her Mother Must Go Now colorway, which she developed for our um, winter crochet along this last year for the Sweet Shadow Wrap uh, that um, Leanne Parenti designed. And this is part of her Compassion collection. And so 20% uh, of all sales of this colorway for the life of the colorway um, get donated to AIDS Life Cycle. So I just wanted to have a couple skeins of this on hand. I bought some extras and I think that along with some of the Love Bubble yarn that I have from uh, from Ken Yarn, I'm going to put some skeins of this and some skeins of Love Bubble at some point in the fall um, up on my coffee page. So if folks had meant to get some when they were on sale um, and couldn't, they can get some now. Ava will dye this to order, so um, I think I got like six or seven skeins of it. Um, but you can always order, I think, most of her colorways on a dyed to order basis. Um, she's been dealing with some back pain issues, so she's a little bit backed up, I think, in the in the um, in the dye studio. But I think she's feeling better and getting back to getting back to work. So mother must go now from Seismic Yarn. This is on her butter sock, which if you haven't used it, it is so squishy. Um, Eighty-five fifteen superwash uh, extra fine merino and uh, and nylon. And then, um, as part of my Magpie Fibers Fiber Society, which I think is the only yarn club I am still um, participating in, uh, I got this month's or this quarter's colors. This was on Swanky Sock, which is their um, MCN base. Um, and I didn't, you get to choose two speckles, two variegated, or they automatically send you one of each. I don't think I made my selection soon enough, so I got one of each. Um, I'm generally a big fan of <laughs> the the colorways that I get from uh, from Magpie. Um, these are not really my 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 jam, so I'm not sure. These these may be D stash uh, colorways. I think maybe if I'd gotten two speckleds, I could have held on to it. But even then, this sort of peachy coral um, colorway is just not just not for me. But it's beautiful yarn, um, and someone will love it. Uh, but not me. <laughs> Sorry, magpies. I love you guys, but, you know, not always going to make one for everybody. Um, the last thing I got, and I originally got these, and I thought, oh, I'll keep one. I will use one uh, for a giveaway. But I think I'm just going to keep them both. So this um, yarn and whiskey, Tammy uh, yarn and whiskey, um, is taking a bit of a sabbatical. I think it's for school. I think she's either studying abroad or doing something for the next semester or so. And so she's kind of shutting down, winding down her shop for uh, for some period of time. And I had bought bags from her before that I have given away, um, but I never kept one for myself. And um, like I said, the intention was to keep one, give one away, but I love them both so much. So this is... Um, Oh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. Something violets, violets in bloom, I think maybe, in a pop-up pouch. So this is just a perfect little size for a sock project, um, and almost looks like a little dop kit. And then it has this little handle um, handle on it. Um, but I think that's lovely. And then the other one is a drawstring. Um, also has a handle, but then it is a drawstring. And this is the pattern is called boomerang. Um, and she just has the best, I don't know where she sources her fabrics from because I, this is not, uh, maybe she has them custom, um, custom printed, um, based on her designs or someone's designs. So this is not something that 
I saw at Joanne when I went to go buy fabric for my for my placemats. Uh, but she just has the funkiest um, the funkiest uh, prints that she uses for her her bags, and the 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 construction quality is really really um, amazing. She does she does get the uh, Happy Homemaker uh, straight seam awards because her her straight, her seams are impeccable. So uh, yarn and whiskey. Uh, I don't know how much longer this shop is going to be open. It may be done in terms of for the time being being able to to order. But I'm really really excited that I uh, got a couple of those uh, got a couple of those for myself. Um, so that's it in terms of uh, acquisitions. I don't know that there's much uh, coming on the on the horizon. I'm going to have to do some digging around. I've pretty much pulled my, um, I think my stuff for this, at least this first round of, of D stash, um, which is coming up in, in August, but I probably could do another pass just to make sure that, uh, I've, I've captured everything, but I don't think, I don't know if there's going to be any acquisitions, uh, coming in the next, uh, next couple of weeks. That said tomorrow, um, yesterday, as you're seeing this, uh, a friend of mine, a yarn friend from our weekly zoom calls is visiting Southern California from Bolivia and she has a day she's here visiting family and she has a day where you know they are all doing something else and she had a day off and so I'm going to go grab her and we are going to do a sort of mini yarn tour of uh, the greater LA area there's a, a yarn shop um, kind of out uh, towards San Bernardino that she has had some interactions with online, I think during the pandemic, did, took some classes or something. So she wants to go see them, which is great because it's a new yarn store to me. Probably not one that I would get to regularly. So I'm kind of excited to, to go check that out. Um, and then we're going to go have some lunch and then we're going to probably swing by Knitting Tree LA, which is my local yarn store. And if we have time, we may hit up one more um, there's either one in Pasadena or one in Long Beach that we could uh, that we hit and do this big loop around the the Southland. So even though there are no acquisitions coming, I could see something making it into my shopping bag tomorrow on my uh, on my yarn tour of Southern California. One thing I do need to try to get is a crochet hook. This little crochet hook that I've been using to to knit that or to crochet that uh, cardigan um, is not the most ergonomically friendly one. So I want to try to find a, a one of the clover ones with a nice handle on it to. To, to finish that up, especially go round and round of those uh, tiny single crochets. Um, so that'll be fun to, tomorrow. In terms of uh, craftism, there's a few things that I wanted uh, to mention. Um, Lou at Old Rusted Chair, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to reach again, uh, has opened up pre-orders again for her Rebel Girl uh, colorway. Uh, she does this occasionally. This is the colorway I got the last time she uh, she opened it up. She also has sock sets uh, this time, which I think incorporates some of these lighter uh, lighter blues and maybe the pink color in there. Um, Ten dollars of every skein sold, and I think fifteen dollars from every sock set sold is donated to Abortion Care Tennessee um, to help fund. Uh, abortions for those in need in uh, in the state of Tennessee, which is, I think, where she is uh, located. Yes, Nashville, Tennessee. So this is Old Rusted Chair. I don't know how long the pre-orders are going to be open, um, but um, go grab Sin. Last time she had them open, you also got a free copy of a single skein shawl. I don't know if that's part of the deal this time or, or not, but uh, go check out oldrustedchair.com and you can uh, grab some Rebel Girl yarn and help fund abortions. Um... The other fundraising yarn that I wanted to mention is from my friend at uh, Pretty Twisted Yarns. Um, she made that I Would Tie-Dye For You yarn that was the giveaway that I just gave away this, uh, this episode and I showed last time that created that amazing uh, tie-dye effect when you knitted up his socks. That was her June fundraiser, but she is continuing her fundraising for Trevor Project into July. She has a really gorgeous skein of yarn called Grainbow. I'm going to pop a picture of it up here. Um, if you go back into her Instagram feed, she did a live last week, I think, where she was showed how it was how it was knitting up, showed how as a stripe she was getting micro striping of the of the rainbows. And then she was using it um, to make a pl planned pooling, not a signed pooling, a planned pooling hat that was a Whimsical Wood Yarn Co. Um, hat pattern. I think it's called her ass hat pattern or something ass hat pattern. Um, but she was getting this really beautiful pooled rainbow with the gray um, 
with the gray base um, around it. So go check out that uh, that live. She has pre-orders up. I think I saw this morning. She said she was getting close to hitting her limit. So are, if you are interested, um, definitely go get some. I think there were several bases she was offering on, including a sparkle base, which was absolutely gorgeous. So that is a Pretty Twisted Yarns. The color is Grainbow. I believe $5 of every skein of that gets donated to uh, to the Trevor Project. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is behind me. So if you're familiar with Two Sheeps, they have put out a calendar. I think they've done it the last couple of years, maybe longer than that. Um, but each month they have paired a designer and a dyer up using a photo from the Southwestern United States as inspiration. The dyer and the designer came up with a, a pattern. And then for each month, as each month changes, those kits are available at the Two Sheeps website and the profits from um, the pattern and the kit sales are being donated to um, organizations chosen by the, the dyer and the designer. So this month it is, um, looks like Sedona to me, but uh, the name of the pattern is Red Brock's Blue Sky Shawl. It is by Fatima Hines, AKA Disturbing the Fleece here on Instagram. And it is um, done in Vortex colorway uh, from Distortion Fibers. I meant to look it up. I thought I had. I believe it's two skeins of DK weight yarn is what comes in the in the kit. Um, but 100% of the profits from the kits sold by Two Sheep this month are going to be donated to Black Trans Women Inc., which is a national organization um, working on uh, helping uh, Black Trans women um, across uh, across the country. So that is uh, Two Sheep. I will link down below to their shop and to the kits that you can buy to, uh, to help that fundraiser. And the last one uh, that I wanted to mention, uh, I mentioned up front that I had been invited to um, the Knit Stars Yarniverse um, as a rising star to participate in one of their lives and had a, a wonderful time. And then I saw later uh, that week that Shelly from Knit Stars and Jake from um, Ken Yarn had teamed up together for a fundraiser. So, I will link down below. Um, it's on Jake's website, I know for sure. I don't know if it's on the Knit Stars website as well. But it's twenty dollars. You get a copy of Shelley's book, Moving the Needle, which is a really um, fun and inspirational story about kind of how she got her um, sort of her yarn journey and how she got started um, in the uh, in the yarn business. And with that, you're going to get one of Jake's handmade resin bookmarks. So as you may know, Jake has sort of stepped out of the dyeing side of his business and is really focusing on these resin accessories, buttons, and, and, and bookmarks, as well as designing and other things. So for $20, you get a copy of, uh, I think it's a signed copy of Shelley's, um, Shelley's book, and then one of Jake's uh, resin bookmarks, um, and then $10 of each of those um, purchases uh, gets donated to the Trevor Project. So it's kind of a win-win-win-win-win <laughs> situation. Um, I, I got one of, uh, Jake sent me when he sent me the um, uh, the Love Bubble yarn that he dyed up for AIDS Life Cycle this year. Um, gave you one of his early, uh, early resin bookmarks and they're really, really beautiful. So um, go check that out. And I think that is about it for this episode. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your week to spend it with me. As I said before, if you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me build this community. And if you can, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I love to hear from you. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. As I said, stay tuned July 25th for the first announcement of many for the upcoming, I cannot believe this, season three of the End Aids Knit Alongs and Crochet Alongs. There will be more announcements coming in the weeks following that, uh, heading into the kickoff on uh, September 1st. So stay tuned for all of that. Again, thank you very much. Have a great week of making.